Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the newton raphson method to solve equations. So we can answer questions from exercise 10c. Uh, newton comes from Isaac Newton and Raphson, uh, I don't know where he comes from, but I'm sure he's a very good mathematician. Or she is a very good mathematician. Um, so let's have a look at deriving this newton raphson formula first. So we've got this curve f of x and we've got a root on the x-axis. Now. What we're going to say here is that we're going to be drawing a tangent to the graph at uh, f at x1, um, and we're going to be use, uh, calculating the gradient of this tangent in two different ways. Um, the tangent is going to later on intersect the x-axis at what we're going to call x2. And in fact, what you can see here is that the solution to this equation, and if we were to do it multiple times, is going to get closer to the root of the actual equation. So, what we notice here is that the next intersection is a closer approximation to our root, and we can just keep on doing it and keep on doing it and keep on doing it. So, what is the formula going to be then? Well, the gradient for this line here the tangent gradient, we can kind of think of it as difference in y divided by difference in x. So in this case here it's going to be f of x1 divided by x1 minus x2. And the gradient we can also consider it as the derivative, the derivative where we have the coordinate of x1, so it would be f dash of x1, the derivative at x1. So we're going to be using gradients here and differentiation. So what we can now do is with this formula, the gradients should match up and be approximately the same, um, is we're going to multiply by x1 minus x2 onto the other side, divide by f dash x1 onto the other side, and what we're going to do then is we're going to just shift it around a little bit, add x2 onto the left, minus this fraction onto the right, and this is what we get. This is the newton raphson formula. So to get the coordinate x2, that's this one here, you have to find the answer to x1 minus the function divided by the derivative of that function where you've input x1 as both the x values in. Keep on doing that a few times and you would hopefully get closer to your root. So this is the newton raphson formula here. xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn over f dash of xn. So, um, there are some cases of newton raphson where the method uh, is less effective or it might, in fact, completely fail. Suppose that our first guess, x1, was either on the stationary point or quite close to the stationary point. In this case, drawing the tangent would lead the point much further away um, from the root. If you can imagine the tangent being drawn here, it's going to be way off the screen, it's going to be less effective. So trying to estimate where the turning point is going to be and moving as far away or as closer to the root as possible uh, is going to be better for us. The method can still work, um, but it might take a few iterations and it won't be as, in if, it won't be as effective. Suppose that our first guess x1 uh, which corresponds was at the turning point now. Now in this case here the tangent here would be a horizontal line and it would never intersect the x-axis again. So in this case here it would just completely fail this method. Um, so we're going to be approximating solutions to these types of curves here. You would think that if you were able to differentiate it you'd be able to solve the equation equal to zero but this is what we're going to be doing anyway. In this question, we have f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 4. We've set a starting point a at the coordinate p, a uh, stationary point to the curve. The equation f of x equals 0 has root alpha in between 1.8 and 1.9. Explain why x0 equals p is not a suitable first approximation to alpha when using the newton raphson method. So it is not appropriate to pick a stationary point as our starting value because, um, because the tangent will not intersect the x-axis at any other point. Um, it, or effectively, if you go back to this formula here, if you differentiate and substitute in the coordinate of a stationary point, your gradient will equal 0 and you'll end up with a fraction that is dividing by 0. So instead, let's start with x0 equals 2. 
what we're going to do here is, well, first we need to know what the derivative is. So let's differentiate. 3x squared minus, so 3x squared plus 4x minus 5 is the derivative. We're going to need this in our question. What we're going to need to do next is take our original function and our derivative function and substitute in the first coordinate here, which is 2. So substituting in 2 into both of the um, formulas, and it will need to be appearing at the front as well. So x1 is equal to 2 minus 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2 minus 4 all over 3 times 2 cubed, 3 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 5. Do that all on your calculator and you get 1.86666. So there we go, that's how we do it. And if we were to do it again, are we going to do it? We dig it, we're going to do it again. We're going to need to apply the procedure twice. So we're now going to use 1.8666. Or you could probably use the answer button on your calculator. That would probably be better than using 1.8666. It will give you a more accurate answer. And in this case here, it's 1.856 to three decimal places. Uh, now, by considering part C here is by considering a change of sine over f of x, show that our answer to part B is correct to three decimal places. So we have to go back to the old method here. We have to show a change in sine. And remember, if we're showing this is correct to three decimal places, then we have to select a boundary to four decimal places in which we can then show a positive to negative or negative to positive sine change. So the solution is going to exist in between there. So substituting in 1.8555, we get a negative answer. Substituting in 1.8565, and we get a positive answer. So therefore, since the function is continuous across this interval, and there is a change of sign, the root must be within this interval, which is therefore rounded to 1.856 to three decimal places. Okay, so there we are. That's how we do these types of questions. All right, then, your turn to have a go at this question four here. Quite a difficult differential you'll have to work out, but I'm sure you'll be fine. Just make sure your calculator is in radians mode for doing this question. Pause the video and try this one out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do in part A is show that for f of x equals 0 has a root in the interval from 1.4 to 1.5. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll substitute in 1.4 and hopefully we'll get either a positive or a negative answer and we'll get something different when we plug in 1.5. So 1, 1 minus 1.4, I'm on my calculator at the moment, minus cos of 1.4 squared, close brackets, we get an answer of minus 0.02. You don't need to go into too much detail with that because all you're going to really look for is whether it goes from positive to negative or negative to positive. In this case, it goes to 0.128. So in this case here, um, as right full conclusion, don't be lazy at this point here. You might drop a mark. As there is a change of sign, between 1.4 and 1.5 and f of x is continuous not not immediately obvious but you just kind of hope it is otherwise they wouldn't have asked you to do this question would they uh, and f of x is continuous uh, there is a root alpha that exists in the boundary from 1.4 to 1.5. So I've used um, the, um, not the coordinate way of writing, this is not a coordinate that I've written here, this is a exists in symbol, and this is a in between 1.4 to 1.5. You could effectively write this as in between 1.4 to 1.5, it's sometimes just nicer to write it like that. Right, part B then, using x0 equals 1.4 as the first approximation, apply the newton raphson uh, procedure once to find f of x to find a second approximation to alpha to three decimal places. So, 
the first thing we're going to need to do here is we're going to have to differentiate. 1 will differentiate to 0, minus x will differentiate to minus 1. Cos squared, now if I remember rightly, cos differentiates to uh, minus sign, so minus cos will differentiate to positive sign, and the x squared here needs to be derived as well, so it's going to be 2x sine x squared. That's the derivative there. So diff the method we were using there is effectively differentiate the inside first, you get 2x, differentiate the outside second, you get sine x squared. Now we're going to plug in the coordinate 1.4. So we're going to, um, no, we're going to apply the newton raphson formula, aren't we? So it's going to be x1 is equal to x0 minus f, uh, the derivative goes on the bottom. So f0 over f dash 0. So x0, not just the number 0. Um, and this is going to equal then, right, let's get started, 1 point minus, so positive 1.4, positive 1.4 minus the function with 1.4 substituted in, divided by the function with the derivative substituted with 1.4 in, and bear with me, I might take a little while doing this all on my calculator, uh, it does take a while to substitute this all in, and I would suggest we do it all on our calculator um, in one big calculation um, just saves any mistakes potentially happening um, so on the so that's the top done now and on the bottom the function is going to be minus 1 plus 2 times 1.4 times sine 1.4 squared close brackets and we have an answer here we have 1.4 Four one two nine one eight six zero six. How many decimal places did they want this to? Three decimal places, so one point four one three. So one point four one three is our answer there. And the next part here is by considering the change of sign of f of x over the interval, show that your answer is correct to three decimal places. So the lower bound here is going to be 1.4125 and the upper bound here is going to be 1.4135 so let's plug this into our original function so we'll go back up 1.4125 and that's going to be cos 1.4125 squared and in this case here we're going to get 0 0.0 minus oh it's a, one of these ones that's got a power of 10 on it minus 0 0.0000762 uh, and the upper bound one 1.4135 let's use the arrow buttons just to change this so change the 2 into a 3 in both of those positions. And we're going to get, oh, it's another one of these times 10 to the minus 4 ones. So 0 0.0000811. 0 0 0 so there we are. As there is a change of sign. Over x being in between 1.4125 to 1.4135 there is a solution in this interval and the last thing we need to write for this conclusion here is therefore the root will round to 1.413 to 3dp. So there we are, there's our conclusion for that one there. Okay, so that's all we have to do for that section there. Have lots of practice on exercise 10c.
make sure you get getting into the habit of using this correct formula. Um, and yeah, just make sure you get into good practices that you're writing conclusions, you're using upper bounds and lower bounds to prove um, what it's equal to to three decimal places, um, etc, etc. So thanks very much for watching and have lots of practice.